Hey guys, Lord of Pontel here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Today we are going to be looking at uh, one of the SX heroes. The next in the SX1 group is Dragon's Avatar. I do have him in my account, but I haven't developed him at all. Um, I only got him at the end of the last season rewards uh, from Eden. Uh, we didn't do very well last season. I only got one SX hero and it ended up being Dragon's Avatar. So I've unlocked a couple of skills for him, but I haven't done anything else, and he's certainly not uh, ready to be put in any legions yet. So what is he? Well, first off, he's a footman hero, and uh, it says melee here, so that means this hero excels at close range combat, suitable for leading front or middle row squads. Um, most combinations that I've seen him in, I would expect that um, he would probably be front row, to be honest with you. Um, Let's have a look at what he's going to do. So, skill one, of course, is the usual leadership skill dictator, which will increase your marching capacity by 23,100 troops. And on to skill two. Skill two, the long march. It is one of these status skills, guys, one of these rare status skills. So it will activate and be um, in effect for the whole battle. Uh, so the effective range is one, and the target is one random friendly squad within effective range, which is your own squad. And this skill is going to inc give between 5% and 50% increased damage for the squad. Um, so that will be the troops. When the current troop is halved, you gain a 100% additional might and resistance. So if you put him on your front row, the front row is getting hit a lot. Once you're down to less than half of your troop count you're going to gain this a massive additional might and resistance for the remainder of the battle while those troops are in effect. So it's kind of like a last gasp um, element to it that they'll, they'll, they'll fight to the bitter end type, type style. Um, this is a different kind of skill to what we've seen before. We haven't seen one that does a similar thing, I don't think, uh, to this. How effective is it going to be, though? Because you're obviously going to have to lose half of your troops straight away um, under normal circumstances only with this slightly additional increased damage um, before then you get the additional might and resistance. Skills 3 and 4 are of course as usual the defensive formation skills increasing resistance from 5% to 50% and increasing might from 5% to 50% for the troops in your squad. Let's look at his second hero specific skill, skill 5, Dragon Descend. This is a passive skill, so this activates after troops basic attack. The effective range is 2 and the target is one random enemy squad, so it is a com it does have a combat element to it. And if you put him on the front row then this could reach the front or middle row of the opponent's legion. After basic attacks, a 100% chance to deal between 101.5% up to 240% damage to an enemy squad within range. So again, it's a passive skill, 100% chance, so guaranteed, and it will deal 240% damage to one of the enemy squads. So it's not amazing for an SX hero. Um, if this was hitting all three enemy squads, then I'd be giving it absolutely the thumbs up. But when now we're talking about like elite level heroes, the fact that this is only hitting one squad is not brilliant, even if it is 100% guaranteed. Um, in terms of the but of course it can be suppressed as well um skill six the awaken skill several elements to this so he'll give a maximum of 50 percent might and resistance 15 percent damage and the usual 250 percent bonus to leadership skills again some sx heroes we've already looked at they're giving uh benefits of 20 percent might and resistance in their awaken skills so this isn't top level again an extra 15% damage on your skills as well. It's okay, but it's, again, like I say, we're, we're wanting top level now. Skill 7 is the discipline skill. So this is going to give between 13% and 40% extra might for the troops in your legion, all three squads in the legion. And then on to skill 8, Unyielding Dragon. This is the first time you would have heard me say this. This is a second status skill. For a hero. So Dragon's Avatar is the first hero um, in the game that we've seen to have two status skills out of his three. Uh, there is another hero that has that, which is the Lawman SX3 
um, cavalry hero, and we'll be looking at her in the near future. But Dragon's Avatar was the first one released to have these the double status skill. Uh, so again, the effective range is one, and the target is your one random friendly squad, because this is impacting on his squad. When current troop power is halved, you'll get between 10% chance up to a maximum 100% chance to basic attack twice. So similar to the second skill, when the troops are less than half, you're getting an additional like last gasp buff. And this element is that it will, um, the troops will attack twice. Then interestingly, when the squad is defeated or has broken morale, the hero will fight for one more turn. Um, so I guess it's possible then that you could have his skill 5 activate, Dragon Descend, and you might get additional damage. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to him in, in battle, in progress. So let's jump straight into a battle video, guys. Luckily, again, we were facing State 1 at the last week uh, in Clash of Province, so there were lots of... Um, like dual battles and things I could take save the videos from. So you'll see this player on the left, his footman squad. He has got Dragon's Avatar with Bleeding Steed in the middle and then Valkyrie on the back row. Um, that is one of the suggested combinations that you could put Dragon's Avatar in. As you can see, they did lose the battle up against a, the very, a very, very strong cavalry combination of Immortal, Rosen and Avalanche. So let's, let's watch uh, the video. You'll see here with Dragon's Avatar because his two two of his skills are status and his other skill is passive. You will only ever get skills used three. That that's all you're ever going to get from there. Uh, you'll see that his skill five only killed three thousand one hundred and sixteen troops as well. So that hasn't a actually taken effect much, but there is a reason for that. So let's jump into the video. So you will see. Pre-battle, all of the status skills activating. So Dragon Avatar, that's his second and eighth skill activating. And then you will see his skill five passive skill activate at the start of the turn. Now, some of the troops are getting... Uh, you'll see there is a healing standard happening on that front row. That's from Bleeding Steed's eighth skill. And now he's been affected by... The armor shred in silent status, so unable to cast combat skills for one turn. So that's why um, his skill 5 will not activate at the minute. And the other thing to consider is that currently the troop numbers are higher than 50%. They're not hard. So uh, the additional benefits from skill 2 and skill 8 are not activated yet. So as you can see, up against a really strong cavalry unit, which have obviously stronger attacking statistics than footmen. You've got this combination of avalanche and immortal that are basically hammering this front front row right now. And yes, okay, you are getting a bit of a reprieve in the healing from bleeding steed. Now, it has dropped on turn already from turn two. The front row is already below fifty percent. And you didn't get the benefit of that other skill. We're into turn three. And that was uh, the additional damage there. Uh, so you can see that they did 3,971 uh, 3, damage. And that will be with the additional might and resistance in place. So the troops have now reached zero. Okay. And interestingly, did you see there? That this is turn three. Bleeding Steed actually healed some of those troops and they lasted into turn four. And Dragon's Avatar also lasted. Now they're at zero and they are out of the battle. But they do, his image and the troops remain on the battlefield. Now, Usually, if a, if, a front, if your front line collapses, obviously they all get removed from the animations as well. So I, I'm interested. I'd be interested to know: is are they actually is the game taking into um, consideration that they they're still there and that that affects the range of your opponent's skills? I don't know. Um, it's a possibility. 
let's just see as well. I'd be interested to see how much damage these other footmen troop do compared to what we saw from Dragon Avatar's front row troops once it gets to their turn. Yeah, 1,002. See, that middle row only caused 1,288 damage um, when they attacked the front row of the opponent. But when these, when you have those uh, second and eighth skills activated for your troops, uh, once their health is lower than 50%, it does, in, it does increase their damage that they can deal considerably. But when you think you've got that extra 100% um, benefit on the resistance, the troops still then did die very quickly. So they were gone within by turn three and, um, you know, a, a small amount recovered for turn four, but they, they then got killed immediately because it was only 1134. And, um, okay, yes, yeah, so this is against a particularly offensive uh, unit because Legion, because you've got um, Immortal and Avalanche, two of the, probably the two best killer heroes in the game for cavalry. Um, and as you can see, that did result in a defeat. So let's go back into Dragon's Avatar. On the face of it, you look at his skills and he's got two status skills and a passive skill. And um, he is, as I say, he's, the, he's actually the only hero in the game along with a mortal that has all three skills that are either passive or status a mortal has two passive and, and one status uh, while dragon's avatar has two status and one passive on the face of it you think wow that's that's actually really good that he's got these these kind of skills that are um you know work in effect but the key thing is most of his abilities only kick in once you've already lost 50 percent of your troops and You've got to kind of consider the different permutations in a battle. What if it's a very close battle, footman on footman, and actually um, your opponent has got better healers than you, and so they, they actually retain more troops. Potentially, they're going to win the battle, and Dragon's Avatar, his abilities are not going to really help you win the battle, if that makes sense. Now, what I would suggest is, in terms of... Um, well, first off, in terms of his skills, you're going to have to still unlock. Um, he's a front row hero, basically, and you're definitely going to have to unlock skill six first to increase your troop count on your front row. Then, as usual, you would then uh, unlock his eighth skill second and the seventh skill third. What kind of combinations are you going to want to use him in? Well, you just saw that he was in a combination with um, Bleeding and Valkyrie and that is one of the better combinations that you can use him in what i would suggest is that you absolutely have to use him in combinations with other um footman heroes that have the recover status so he would work you could potentially put him with for instance you could have dragon's avatar scanned at sx4 which has a large um healing skill and then even bleeding seed as well on the back row um Desert Storm also has healing skills in his, in his skills. And uh, so really, you're going to have to put him... If it's, I think, potentially, if you put him in a Legion with Skander and Bleeding Steed, those two could be healing a lot of troops. And it could be beneficial if they're healing enough troops to keep his squad alive, and but you're below half of your squad number... And you're getting the extra benefits from the might and resistance for the remainder of the battle. I think that could give you an edge um, in some cases, particularly like if it's footmen against footmen. But you've just got this consideration that if you're against a powerful archers or cavalry legion, uh, which have got a lot of killers, um, then you're, you're particularly, you know, cavalry, it's you're, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. And I'm not sure... He uh, he wouldn't be right. He wouldn't be elite um, in terms of my number one choice of having a of having a hero on on the front row. I think um, even Dachi SX two footman is going to be better than him, um, or even just putting Bleeding Steed on the front row, uh, depending on what other heroes you've got. Because you could do Bleeding Steed, um, Scander, and Desert Storm, for instance. 
So Dragon's Avatar, if you pick him up in rewards from Eden or, you know, from if you're doing that SX4 recruitment banner and you end up picking him up, is it the end of the world? I would say no if you do have other footman heroes who are healers. If you don't have those ones that I've mentioned, Desert Storm Scandal or Bleeding Stead, then I think you're going to struggle with him, to be honest. Uh, that's my opinion on it. So there you go. That is Dragon's Avatar, guys, the third of the six SX1 heroes. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it informative. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please do click on that subscribe. Uh, give me a like, ring the bell. And um, if you could share my channel in your Alliance Chats, Province Chats and Guild Chats, that would be much appreciated. Um, if you use WhatsApp, Line, Discord or Viber as well, pop a share of uh, my channel or a specific video in there, guys. That would be absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.